swans made from old tires or a mosaic of broken glass? All of that is a thing of the past. In this video, we will show you how to create an affordable and high-quality dream backyard, what materials are best for making pathways in a garden, and how to make practical use of unused construction materials. Enjoy the show! When it comes to landscaping your backyard, it's essential to pay ample attention to the pathways. You'll be using them daily, and their condition significantly affects the overall appearance of your yard. But before choosing the design and material for a garden path, there are several crucial factors to consider. For instance, the condition and appearance of the path can be marred by plants and weeds that might grow through it. While some designs incorporate greenery, not everyone opts for this type of garden path. In most cases, you will need to carefully treat the area where the path will be laid with herbicides to prevent plant growth. Another critical factor is drainage. You need to plan a drainage system beneath your pathway. For instance, if you lay concrete slabs or paving stones directly on unprepared ground, some parts of the path may sink over time due to the influence of moisture, which inevitably comes with rainfall. To address this, a special drainage layer is needed. Before laying down your material, you should fill the trench with a mixture of gravel and clay, topping it with sand. Of course, each layer needs proper compacting. Adhering to this construction method will protect your garden paths from potential damage. Only after the preparatory stage should you begin laying the primary material for your garden paths. But what are the options available? Perhaps the most budget-friendly choice is gravel. You can simply fill the prepared trench with gravel and distribute it evenly across the surface. The layer can be relatively thin, just a couple of inches. The second, more intriguing option is a combination of gravel and paving stones. This is still a budget-friendly choice, as the materials are relatively inexpensive. By combining paving stones and gravel, you can create interesting patterns for your path, which will give your garden a unique look. Paving stones are primarily used for decorative purposes in this case. The third option is a mix of gravel and wood. This type of garden path is very stylish, beautiful and cost-effective. It works well in both classic garden settings and more designer landscapes. What's crucial is that this option looks fantastic and costs next to nothing. However, if you're considering creating a garden path using gravel or pebbles, be aware that this material is more hazardous than, for example, traditional sidewalk tiles. In addition to the risk of tripping or slipping, small stones are much more dangerous if you fall on them. Some of them might even have sharp edges. If you have small children or pets, they might inadvertently swallow these stones. So, before choosing this option, it's worth thinking carefully. A safer option is a stone pathway. It's just as durable and it's impossible to trip over flat stones. Plus, large stones won't be swallowed by children or pets. One popular option is a cobblestone path, which is essentially bricks laid in a specific pattern. This option is relatively expensive because it requires a significant amount of material and the preparation work is quite labor-intensive. A more budget-friendly option is the use of stone slabs. They blend well with the garden's overall look due to their natural color, and their shape complements any design project. Stone slabs look terrific in sunny regions with lots of greenery and flowers. Another option is to use mulch along with stone slabs. Mulch consists of ordinary wood chips or coniferous bark. Such a pass will blend seamlessly with your garden, and the use of this organic material helps nearby plants receive additional nutrients, as wood chips or bark can serve as natural fertilizer. The cost of this type of pass will be quite low, and it looks exceptionally appealing. The next material for a pathway that you can confidently use is cement. Many companies offer special outdoor concrete tiles. They will look fantastic in your garden, creating a beautiful contrast between the grey concrete and the greenery. There are numerous design options, ranging from simple straight tiles to various shapes. Another method is more fundamental. You can create a single seamless concrete pathway. This option is highly durable and long-lasting, but at the same time expensive. There are many ways to enhance such a pathway, but it comes down to the cost. Decorating an already expensive pathway might not be the best idea. By the way, you can also use more organic materials such as creating an entirely wooden pathway. You can make it from regular wooden planks and arrange them in a pattern that suits your taste. The contrast of colors between the surrounding garden and the wood will create a beautiful effect. But you can use not only planks but also wood slices. Simply cut the wood into circular pieces and lay them out in your pathway. That's it. This option looks very appealing and you can even make it for free. For instance, if a tree fell on your property. However, if that didn't happen, the cost of such a pathway can be quite high, depending on the type of wood you choose. 
When it comes to setting up outdoor lighting, it's worth considering LED lights. They are incredibly energy efficient. Since your property can be quite extensive, electricity costs for lighting can surpass other utility expenses. LED lights are also considered highly reliable. They have a broad operating range, from minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees. However, it's not recommended to use them in very hot environments like saunas, as they can quickly fail. LED lights come in two types, those powered by the electrical grid and those powered by solar energy. If you opt for solar-powered lights, it's a bit more complex. They have a built-in battery that charges during the day and powers the lamp at night. If you have very few sunny days, your lights might not work at all. Another aspect to consider is the waterproofing of your lighting fixtures. They come in various levels of protection, from those that can be damaged by just a few splashes to lights that can be submerged in a pool or a lake. For your garden or yard, it's advisable to choose waterproof fixtures with a rating of no less than IP54. Finally, when deciding on the placement of the lights, whether ground level or suspended, it all depends on what you want. Outdoor lights can accentuate the exterior of your home or enhance the beauty of any garden. It's all about your needs. However, if your pathway is close to your home, it's much more convenient to place the lights directly on it, avoiding the need to worry about running electrical wires. If you need to illuminate an area far from the house, you can use ground-level lights with solar panels. In this case, you won't need to dig up your entire property to hide power cables. And next, you will learn how to set up a fire pit in your backyard. Every rural property should have a place where you can gather with friends or family and relax. For some, it's a gazebo or a veranda. For others, it's a barbecue area. Some people enjoy watching a blazing fire and smoldering embers under the open sky. In that case, setting up a fire pit area is an excellent choice. Before you start setting up a relaxation area, you should think carefully about safety. A fire pit is a high fire hazard area because the fire remains open. You should place the fire pit away from any shrubs and trees and clear the area of grass near the fire. All of this can catch fire in a matter of seconds and lead to very dire consequences. Next comes the choice of how your fire pit will look. There are three placement options – in-ground, at ground level, or on a small pedestal. Each of these options has its pros and cons. For instance, in-ground placement can make it challenging to get rid of ash. A ground-level fire pit might lead to accidental burns and stumbling into the fire. If you choose to place the fire pit on a small platform, be prepared for the embers to fall on your feet. Then comes the choice of fire pit material. For example, you can build one from regular bricks left over from construction. This option will be very affordable and in some cases even free. The fire pit will look beautiful as well. The second option is to use special metal bowls or plates. In this case, the fire pit can be moved from place to place and it's easy to dispose of the ash. However, this option requires buying a special container for the fire. The last option is a concrete fire pit. It's also quite affordable and durable. Moreover, you can make it in a uniform style with the rest of your relaxation area. It will look stunning. In this relaxation area, consider the seating arrangements. For example, rocking chairs or wooden benches can be an excellent choice. They will complement your green garden and any of the fire pit options mentioned earlier. Another very popular type of relaxation area is a gazebo. However, many people wonder why it's needed when it's cheaper and easier to build a veranda. Indeed, constructing an extension to your house for relaxation can be more cost-effective and sometimes more practical. For instance, it's easy to move furniture from the house, allowing you to relax without being far from all the conveniences. But in this case, if you want to stay up late with a lively group and you have small children or elderly people sleeping in the house, you might seriously disturb them. Plus, placing a barbecue or fire pit inside the veranda is a bad idea, since all the smoke would go directly into the house, increasing the risk of a fire. So you might choose to place the veranda away from the house. When choosing a gazebo, you should follow these rules. You'll need 6 square feet of space per person. This means that a small area is sufficient for a family of four, but if you often host larger gatherings, you should consider how and where to accommodate everyone. Next, decide whether your gazebo will be closed or open. With a closed gazebo, you won't have problems with cold weather, wind or insects. Moreover, you can set up a barbecue or use it to stay warm in cold weather. Open gazebos are more suitable for placing deeper into the garden. They're primarily intended for small relaxation sessions rather than hosting noisy gatherings. However, there's no strict limit, and you can use them for various occasions. 
The catch is that they are more suitable for summer, and sitting in such a gazebo during the winter is not an option. Plus, insects can become a constant annoyance. Next, you'll need to decide on the appearance of your relaxation area. Gazebos can have a classic rectangular shape, be round, or have a polygonal design. The choice of materials will depend on the shape. For example, you can't make a round gazebo from wood. You'd need to use metal or stone. Wood is of course the cheapest option, but you're not limited to it. Perhaps the coolest and simultaneously the most expensive relaxation option is the barbecue area. Essentially, it can be an open space or the same gazebo where you and your guests will prepare food. Typically, such areas feature not only a barbecue grill, but also other amenities like a pizza oven or even a cauldron. It's best to create such a relaxation area in an enclosed space to avoid being bothered by wind and bad weather. If you have the budget, the best option is to build a permanent barbecue area where you can incorporate an oven or a fire pit for the cauldron, for example. Why is that necessary? It's simple. Even during the winter, it will be warm enough in a covered barbecue area to sit with friends or family and enjoy delicious food. If you prefer to save money, an open barbecue area might be suitable for you. It won't be as comfortable as a covered area, but it will be much cheaper. You don't necessarily need multiple stoves. A barbecue grill and a griddle, for instance, will suffice. The choice of how to design your relaxation area is entirely up to you. The only thing you should avoid economizing on is the flooring. Using wood for the floor isn't recommended, especially in an area with a barbecue, where embers can easily fall. This can lead to a fire. Moreover, it's simply not possible to place a heavy oven with a barbecue or a high-end grill on a wooden floor. In this video, you've learned how to create your dream backyard affordably. Thanks for watching.